Hello, and welcome to a very special 8-minute demo video series. Today, we're going through a video tutorial on OIS 6.3 Advanced Workflow Design and Best Practice Video Shorts. Yep, these are going to be smaller videos on specific topics. And the topic we're going to talk about right now is data mapping. Let's take a look at some data mapping examples. Now there are several ways to map data within Opalis, but there are a couple that are baked right in. One is the map publish data object. Now to show you how to use the map publish data object, well, I need some input data and then I need to be able to output that data. So I have a file here and has some text in it and basically just priorities, maybe for a ticketing system. And um, I need to map this data to integer values from 0 to 5. And as opposed to putting semicolons in here, making that 0 and you know going up the line, I have an object, that data mapping object, that I could use. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. So first we need to get that data on the data bus. Reading line. Just going to go point to that. I'm going to read all the lines in. And I'm going to pass that data to the map publish data item. Output data, publish data. It's going to be given a name. This is going to be priority. And the source data, which will be the published data from the previous object. The line text. And then what patterns am I looking for? Immediate is going to be mapped to a 5. I'm going to pull this up so I don't forget what the statuses are. Critical is going to be 4. High is going to be 3. It's an interesting scale, I realize. Moderate is 2. Low is 1, and ad hoc is 0. So now, for this priority field, if any data comes in here that matches the pattern on the left, it'll be mapped to the integer value on the right. And you can see you could add multiples if you want. Let's take a look at what this looks like, and I'll just output it to a simple send platform event. So we'll do the line text and then I'll do an equals and then the results from priority. So let's go ahead and run this for the testing console. It's going to read those lines in and then it's going to translate them one at a time. And now we can see here that immediate equals 5, critical 4, high is 3, moderate 2, low with 1, and ad hoc is 0. Maybe you have two ticketing systems you're trying to sync, and on the left-hand side you're reading from one ticketing system, and then you need to map data you know, differently in a different ticketing system. Objects would represent those two ticketing systems where you're reading and then writing and then manipulating the data in the middle. Now this object works great if you're, uh, you know, only, you're only evaluating 1 to maybe 25 different uh, items, maybe up to 50. Um, I'm a database guy, so I like using databases more, but, you know, anywhere I'd say between 10 and 50 items in here, and then obviously you could have much more mapping rules than just one here, and you're going to want to keep that under 25 different mapping rules. It depends on your use case. So, um, if you have something quick and easy like this, like priority, severity, things like that for a ticking system, this is an ideal use case. If you have something and you have a bigger list and uh, let's say it has different rules, for instance, we have a data table here and maybe this is in a CMDB or something, this is just an example, where we have a list of computer names and then their priority here. And you you wouldn't want to necessarily put this, since it's already stored in the CMDB, you wouldn't want to put this data into a map publish data object because it's already here. So you could just simply write a query that's going to read from the table and then I'll put the priority. And I'll give you an example of that now. So I'll copy this text here. And I'll create a new text file. I'm just going to paste all that stuff into there. And I want to know what the priority is, so I'm going to create a new policy. This time we still want to read from the A text file. This time we're going to use a query database object. Set up the connection and just identify the database and then the select statement.
paste it in here, and then we're going to use publish data for the where clause. Line text. So this is going to produce priority based on the name that's reading from the file. And then we'll just do another set, set in platform event. Line text, and then the result. And this one I will check in and run. It will be a little faster, and we'll look at the events log here in Opalis. You can see it's already worked through them. I refresh, and there you have it. So you can see each one of them has been assigned a value based on what it read from the data table. So your decision on which method to use, whether using map publish data or a database object, really is going to come down to the amount of data that you want to put in a map publish data. If it already exists in another table, you want to reference it. Um, but in general, for a map publish data object, you want to keep it to small numbers of map fields and small number of field options. And also, it's great if you don't have any database skills um, because it's, you know, <laughs> very easy object to fill out. And then if you want to use a table, you, you can use much larger numbers of map data fields and field options. And obviously, if you have database skills, uh, you can use that as well. But there are two options um, that I've shown you here. There are other options. You can do case statements uh, in C Sharp or PowerShell or make arrays, whatever you want. But these are the, probably the two easiest ways to map um, data in the Opalis data bus. We certainly appreciate you watching. Thank you.